Today, I'm gonna to talk about 10 unexpected culture shocks that I experienced when moving from the United States to Scotland. Even though they kind of speak English here, it is a completely different world, and it's impossible to go into every single difference in one video, so let's just call this part one, because I'm sure I will make more videos in the future about things that you might find shocking if you're moving from the United States to Scotland or elsewhere in the UK. Let's start by saying hello. In the United States, whenever I was greeting someone, I would usually just say, what's up, or hi, or hello. Here in the UK, the standard greeting and pronunciation will vary a lot based on where it is you live. Where I live, I would say the most common one is either hiya or all right. I've been here almost four years now, and all right still kind of trips me up sometimes because in the States, if you ask if someone's all right, it's usually because they look like they're hurt or something like that. Whereas here, it's just a standard greeting, and they're not particularly asking you if you're actually all right. The typical response would be, all right, ta, or if you're having a particularly bad day, you might just say, live in the dream. Number two is that trash is everywhere, or as you'd call it here, rubbish. Now, I'm not sure if it's actually more here or if it's just more visible because everything here is smaller and you're not kind of just trapped in your car the whole time driving everywhere like you would be in the States. But I at least feel like I see a lot more rubbish here. And I think there are, well, the two main reasons for it. I live on the west coast of Scotland and we get a ton of wind. I would say that overall the worst part about our weather is the wind. And when it comes to rubbish, in the United States, your rubbish, everywhere I've ever lived or ever heard of, rubbish is collected once a week. Whereas here where I live, your rubbish bin is only collected once every three weeks. Same goes for your multiple recycling bins like your paper and cardboard bin, your plastic bin, all of them are basically alternating and every three weeks you would have your bin collected. I constantly have rubbish in my garden that is not mine and even though there are rubbish bins at I would say almost every bus stop and very regularly in town, they're almost always full when I see them so they're not collected often enough and then you add in the wind with those rubbish bins that are overflowing, well you get the idea. If you're coming to the UK, especially if you have small children, just be aware. The rubbish is only collected every three weeks, at least in my council, and I'm sure you can imagine how bad it is when you have an entire bin completely full of dirty diapers or nappies, as they call them here, sitting outside in the summer heat for three weeks before being collected. It's not the most pleasant smell in the whole world. And number three, tap water is amazing. In the United States, the tap water is for the most part disgusting and unsafe to drink. I'm sure most of you have probably heard about what's happening with the water in Flint, Michigan and what's been happening for at least a decade now. And while that might be an extreme scenario, I would say the vast majority of the US does not have safe drinkable tap water. Most Americans will just buy a whole bunch of plastic water bottles or they'll use one of those like Brita filters for filtering all of their drinking water. When I first moved here, I bought a water filter because that's what I always had to use in the States. And I probably should be embarrassed by this, but it took me probably about almost six months before I really tried the tap water. And I wish I would have sooner because it is amazing. In the Glasgow area, the water is fairly soft because of the low mineral content in the area and I know Glaswegians would say it's the best tap water in the whole world. I couldn't really say if it's the best in the world, but it's definitely fantastic and the best that I've, I've ever had. If you're moving somewhere like London, I've heard their water isn't as good, but it should at the very least be safe to drink, unlike in the United States where the tap water frequently is dark and literally smells like mold. Number four is that you have to pay for bags at shops. You know how in Aldi you have to bring your own bags or pay for bags? Well, it's like that here in every single shop. If you forget to bring your own bag, that's fine, but they, by law, have to charge you a minimum of 10 pence per bag. I would say, for the most part, you're looking at about 20 to 40 or 50 pence per bag, maybe a pound if you're getting one of those really fancy reusable ones, but it is something to look out for when you move here. Also, I've seen some Americans talk in these Facebook groups about bringing over your own bags when you move. Don't save the space because they are incredibly cheap to buy your own. 
and you will ultimately end up like in the states where you have a drawer full of a whole bunch of old plastic bags it'll be the same way here you'll have a whole bunch of reusable bags be from all the times that you went to the shop and forgot to bring it with number five is that sales tax is included but not always one of the most infuriating things about shopping in the United States is that you never know exactly how much you're going to have to pay for your items until you go check out. In the US, none of the prices include sales tax, and the sales tax amount can vary not just from state to state, but also from city to city. There are times where you could buy the exact same item that's the exact same price from two different stores that are literally across the street from each other and pay a different amount in each store because that street is the county line where it changes to a new city or something like that. It's insane. Even essential items like food, baby products, hygiene products, in a lot of places in the States, they will still have the full amount of sales tax on them, whereas here they don't have any sales tax or VAT, value added tax. It's not really a huge issue anyways, you don't really notice it because here the price includes the sales tax, except when it doesn't. There are places here where the price does not include sales tax, but it is primarily places that are geared towards businesses. So things like online wholesalers for businesses or Costco don't include sales tax in their prices. Also, your car mechanic might not include tax in his rates. My local mechanic charges 50 pounds an hour for his labor, but that's before tax, before VAT. So in reality, it's closer to 60 pounds an hour for his labor, which is fine, just something you have to be aware about. Number six, the green pump is petrol and the black pump is diesel. Now, Americans spend way more time at the pump than people here, and that's primarily for two reasons. American vehicles get significantly worse fuel economy, even if you account for the difference in the size of a gallon here compared to the States. And also, Americans spend way more time in their vehicles because they have to drive everywhere, so they go a lot more miles in their cars than people would here. In the United States, diesel-powered cars are almost non-existent. The only diesel powered cars that I've ever heard of in the US would be like the Volkswagen TDI vehicles. And I think they stopped selling those a couple years ago because of the whole diesel emissions issue that probably everyone knows about now. Other than that, pretty much the only vehicles that would be diesel powered would be your big 18 wheelers or lorries and then some pickup trucks would use diesel. Regardless of how many people use diesel though, I would say every, well, everyone should know that in the States, the green pump is for diesel and the black pump is for gasoline or petrol. Here, it's the exact opposite. I haven't made this mistake, but I'm sure it's possible. Um, when you come here, make sure that you double check the labeling for the pump because you don't want to grab diesel instead of petrol accidentally when you're going to fill up at the pump. Number seven is the lack of sunlight. Now, Scotland is quite a bit further north than the continental United States. And growing up in Oklahoma, of course, days were longer in the summer and shorter in the winter, just like pretty much everywhere else. But when I moved here, I didn't quite realize just how much of a difference it would be and how extreme the differences would be. And that's one thing I'm not sure if I'll ever quite get used to. Winter in Scotland can be incredibly hard, especially depending on what type of work you do, because you can feel like it is constantly dark outside the entire time. In the dead of winter, the sun doesn't come up until like 9 a.m. and it starts getting dark at around 3 or 3.30 in the afternoon. So for a lot of people, it will be dark when you're going to work and it will be dark when you're coming home from work. But on the flip side, summers are fantastic. Where I live in the dead of summer, even after midnight, you can still see a tiny little bit of light on the horizon. Number eight, daylight savings time is on a different day. A big adjustment when moving abroad is the time difference. Depending on where your family and friends are, even if they're on the East Coast, it's still going to be a five hour difference when you wanna to talk to them. One silver lining with this is that daylight savings time is actually on a different day here than it is in the United States. Our time just switched over last week, or maybe two weeks ago. Time kind of blends together for me. Um, but there was a period of about two weeks where the time difference was one hour less. So people on the East Coast would have only been four hours behind instead of five. 
So that's kind of nice. Number nine, they have milkmen. If you're in a major city like New York City, I wouldn't be surprised if they exist, but at least the part of the country that I lived in, milkmen were something from the movies from the 1950s or something like that. You didn't actually get your milk delivered. Judging by the way things are in the United States, even if it did exist, it would be incredibly expensive. A couple weeks after I moved here, I got a knock on my door from a salesman from the local farm just down the street a couple miles. And ever since then, I have had a milkman. Well, I say milkman because that's what the term would be in the States. I'm not sure if it's actually a man that delivers it. All I know is that every Monday and Thursday morning when I wake up, there is milk sitting on my doorstep. And the best part about it is, you know, not only is it convenient and easy, it's not expensive. The amount that I pay for had to have my milk delivered only works out to be like 30 or 40 pence more expensive per container than if I were to make the 30 minute round trip drive to Aldi and get the exact same thing. And the last unexpected culture shock that I'll talk about today is realizing just how stressed I was unknowingly from the threat of violence in the United States. Before I left the United States, I thought that I was fully aware of just how dangerous it was, but I don't think I truly realized it until after I left. There might be a better analogy to use, but you know that analogy where if you put a frog into a pan of room temperature water and then slowly bring it to a boil, it won't realize the danger that it's in until it's too late. I think that you can only truly realize the danger in the United States until that threat of danger is removed. Here in Scotland, I never have to worry about my kids getting shot when they go to school. I'm not going to have to grab my kids and run out of the grocery store because someone walked in with a gun or cut a coffee shop date short because someone came in and was sitting across the room with a gun strapped to their hip. Here in Scotland, security guards can't have guns and even the police don't carry guns unless they're part of the like armed response unit, which is basically our version of SWAT. Nowhere is perfect, but Life here in Scotland is infinitely safer than in the United States. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're an American who moved to the UK, let me know in the comments what your biggest culture shock was when you first moved here. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button to stay up to date. And if you like this video, you might enjoy this one where I talk about eight things that you might not have realized were invented in or by Scottish people. That's it for now. I will see you next time.